Um, I made it when I was doing my masters in London. It was a photography masters, but I realized that I wasn't getting anywhere with taking pictures, so I ended up making a video piece. And um, it had to basically be a two channel, I mean, a two screen video piece with sound to say what I wanted to say. I was looking at the underground raving scene. I mean, people who go out at night in empty buildings, party all night, and I didn't want to do it. Um, I had been working uh, on the ground, I mean, filming, photographing people uh, in different parts of the city, in different parts of the country. And then I realized that it wasn't actually saying anything different to what I had been seeing. So I took it out of the context and I removed everything. I just used a completely black box. I created a black box in my studio um, and I filmed many, many people. Um, and then this is the piece that you have here. So it's trying to tell you a little bit about what I've seen and how people feel, um, I sense they feel free in that black box, in that emptiness. And it was something that was quite striking to me um, when I first moved to London, so. I think the fundamental difference I found, I mean, now I live in Jamaica, and so it's a very different way of expressing yourself, using your body, but in London I found people are very, um, quite distant to each other in the way they, you know, their physical contact to the rest of the world. They have a very s strong sense of a personal space. And I found that possibly in nightclubs or in underground nightclubs, people really, went the opposite way yet they're in a very alienating environment they're in this total well pretty much darkness you can't really see anyone and you're very close to people you know you feel their their body heat their sweat they're right next to you but you're by yourself everyone is dancing by themselves so that's what I was I was looking at that contrast I mean in this piece I, I just have a baseline I mean that's what it came down to I had worked with a bunch of different soundtracks and a lot of my friends in London are producers they make electronic music um, so I was kind of very, you know, I need to use something that says a story, you know, trying to say a narrative, but I, I realized that it, it was too much. You don't need, in, an, in a video installation necessarily, to tell different stories at the same time. It gets confusing. So I just ended up with this one beat, and having it with the bass in the room, it, it nearly sounds like a heartbeat. I mean, it's, it's in between, you know, the music and just the sound of the body. And when you see the person moving in synchronization, hopefully it gives you like an entrance to another way of seeing that movement, um, especially for people who find electronic mu music very alienating, and I know that many people do, even though it's, I think it's a big thing in Brazil as well, I know Techno Briga, I've, I've heard that, you know, it's like something that I've been following, yeah, but uh, I still have to go and see it live. Um, but ultimately, I think that the beat comes from, you know, such a basic, you know, the drum or whatever, and, and so in the electronic scene, I found that without lyrics, without content of, you know, on top of music, you just come back to the basics. And that's what I've been looking at, just stripping it back completely and looking at the basic elements. So that's it, really. Yeah. In my work, well, it's really important to look at the body with, um, I guess, an open mind. Um, having been in London in a very multicultural environment, I was, I felt I was an open minded person. You know, I considered everyone you know, in an equal way. When I moved to Jamaica now, I've been realizing how the body has a whole different meaning, the way you you are, you pose, you stand, you, you dress, what you're saying with your body, the skin, your color of skin. So now I'm looking at it differently. At the time in London, I was really looking at how the body's all essentially, you know, collectively, especially in a party, they, they start to say something different as to when, you know, you have individual groups, individuals completely separate. So I guess in the artwork, in the, in the video, I'm able to say something different than in just still photographs. The time, you know, time-based, um, sorry, the time-based um, quality of a video work allows you to tell, tell a different story about the body. And the reality of it, in a video where it's not perfectly, you know, directed, when someone's just moving as they want, you get something a bit more natural, but again, it's then made into an artwork, so it's different. Yeah, I'm very, yeah, very interested in that. Have you been developing your, this work is, how old is it? The, since 20, 2010, yeah. Um, well, at the moment I've been working actually in a very, let's say a very Jamaican setting. Like I'm looking at the like different mythical figures from Jamaican folk, Lore and different stories around like the, the river Muma, which is like a, a river goddess or a river creature, like a mermaid. And looking at, I'm a feminist as well, so I'm looking at how women can identify to different types of heroes or heroines in Jamaican culture. So it's kind of moved on, but I'm still looking at the body as the, the main way to express different feelings that can't necessarily be said in 
in a different way than in a video or in a, in a film piece. Yeah. Or in a performance, actually. On the Caribbean networks, yeah, they were posting Video Brazil, Video Brazil, so then I was like, okay, let me have a look, and I was very, you know, very impressed, you know. I, it sounded great, so I was like, okay. I spent, I think, one evening very late filling out my form and, you know. <laughs> it's a big city, it looks... I mean, I, I've been to Buenos Aires and I've been to Defe and that's it. I don't know any other cities in Latin America and South America. So my first impression is tall, very tall. Many people, lots of white people, you know, a mix, I guess. And I'm just, I'm just curious. I'm just looking at everything. I, I really want to see a lot of what Sao Paulo has to offer in many different ways, art particularly and other things as well. Sure. Um, should I speak to camera? Yeah. Okay. What I was trying to say in this piece um, a lot of people are very addicted to certain things. I mean, we're all addicted to something. Addiction is a big part of our lives, especially in an urban setting. We find addictions necessary. You know, we, we have to be addicted to our work, to our family to an extent, to our, you know, fun, whatever fun that is. It can be very dangerous. And I guess with the techno and, and the rave scene and the club scene, you see a lot of drugs, you see a lot of alcohol, you see a lot of extremes. And, you know, some of the people I'm filming are high. I mean, that's... That's part of the piece, but it's not necessary to understand it. It's just that I found that taking them out of the context, it really shows you who they are as an individual, but you're not really seeing their face. So you're just really looking at who they are and how they use their body to really, I would say, um, express themselves completely, like honestly express themselves, but without any style necessarily. They have their own movement, but it's not, they're not showing off. Yeah, that's the main thing I was trying to look at is that people in a nightclub, they're always in in front of someone else they're, they're showing off they're they're performing to to someone to my camera it was fine like I didn't really want them to perform I wanted them to be but that's always a performance of course so I guess I'm playing on that on that complete uh, the, the polar opposites of performing and yet trying to be yourself and in a nightclub it didn't work so I had to do it in the studio so